to talk about one of the top players in the country and on the wooden watch list, that's Dennis Smith Jr. now off the wooden watch list because we're down to 20. A uh, potential top five pick in June can do everything out there on the floor. He's going to have to have a Herculean effort tonight to get a win against one of the top teams in the country in Florida State. And we have seen a few Herculean efforts from him. If this is a Final Four team, these are the five that are going to carry them there. Xavier Rattan Mays is the distributor. Dwayne Bacon, the closer. Terrence Mann, the glue guy. Jonathan Isaac, folks, at 6'10", unreal. Mr. Versatility can shoot it inside and outside. And for every good team like you, we need some muscle. Michael Ojo provides it in abundance. O'Reilly Auto Parts brings us the FSU starting lineup. And that guy is still on the wooden watch list. Just released on ESPNU, that's Wayne Bacon. One of a handful of stars that we have arguably two of the top five freshmen in the country on the same floor tonight. Big test for Dennis Smith Jr. and NC State's going to be what tonight? Yeah, NC State is going to have to be careful not to turn the basketball over because Florida State is an explosive transition team. Number one in transition points in the ACC. Ball security going to be important for the Wolfpack. Because you track meet tonight, NC State averages over 81 points a game. Florida State 84, and they're coming off a game in which they beat Clemson and scored 109. They beat Clemson 109 to 61. Hmm. And they shot 66% from the field in that game. If this team peaks, they're capable of a national championship? Oh, without a doubt. They have all the pieces that I look for in the team. Front line depth, a closer in Dwayne Bacon, somebody who can make big shots down the stretch. Tremendous depth. And got guys coming off the bench who can knock down three-point shots. Michael Ojo, number 50, jump center. And he has it go to NC State to start. They go left to right on our screen here, and Smith Jr. will be guarded by a handful of different guys tonight. Starting on him is Xavier Rathon Mays. Yeah, lots of high ball screens for NC State. And remember, turnovers are going to be an issue. You can't turn it over against this Florida State team. Now there was one right there. Good hands by Ojo. Wow. Starting the zone. Jonathan Isaac was wide open underneath. NC State during their shoot around worked on ways to cover this. Isaac's long range shot, and he buries the three. He's about 6'9, but he's grown seven inches in the last four years, so he's used to playing out and shooting from distance. Yeah, uh, folks, before the Clemson game, he was one for four from the three point line. Before that, 10 of 16 from three over two games. This is a guy that can play inside and outside. Has a nice handle as well. Who baseline gets it. Isaac with that three, by the way. He now has more points tonight than he did in the Clemson game when they scored 109. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I think that's an opportunity for North Carolina State, something that they can exploit. I think Abdul Malik Abu has a mismatch on the inside if they can get it to him against a much lighter Jonathan Isaac. The goal of this 2-3 zone is to keep Florida State out of the paint. Terrence Mann open in the corner. Good dish. Isaac fade away. Ooh, special. Five quickies for Jonathan Isaac. And folks, you've seen the versatility we spoke about. He's already knocked down the three and the ability to go down in the post. And it's 6'10", shooting that turnaround, Jay. It is difficult to challenge. I think you got to go back to a boot here. Instead, long three, contested three, well short. And a rebound to Rathon Mays. They'll push it to Isaac. He had a man open for a three, but they'll slow it for a second. Ojo's open. This is the jump shot, defensive rebound. Smith had it, Ojo on the floor, NC State, and it's a jump ball. Check out Jonathan Isaac's fast start tonight. And this kid is absolutely special, folks. That's 6'10 with deep, deep range, and then you can give it to him on the low box, and <laughs> yard seven is seven feet tall. He's nowhere near the release point on Jonathan Isaac. What a special, special talent. And with all Sweet the talk, hair too. But he does have that, which maybe makes him look like he's about as tall as Ojo, who's <laughs> 7-1. That's right. But you think about the freshmen and all those conversations about Fultz and the Kentucky freshman and Jackson from Kansas. Th mm. This guy's in that class. Yeah, let's not forget about Laurie Markinen at Arizona. Thank oh! you. No, Isaac, yes! 
He's got all seven, and what a start for Jonathan Isaac. You know, quiet night against Clemson the other night in the blowout. Only one of four couldn't quite get involved in the offense. I guess he's making up for it tonight. Refs give it to FSU. Watch the position. Look where he comes from. A little screen there. No one gets a body on him. And if you allow a 6'10 guy with that kind of reach to go uncontested, he'll finish it just like that. Beautiful read there by Jonathan Isaac. So, Fonzie, three minutes we've seen a three pointer, <laughs> yes. a fadeaway, uh -huh. and a dunk. If he comes over here and puts on some earphones over here, <laughs> he would have done it all tonight. I can just lay out. There's about 24 NBA scouts here to watch Isaac Bacon and Smith Jr. And so far advantage for this guy Isaac another fadeaway that one he misses so he's human tonight. And no reset. Got to box out NC State you cannot allow what a drive you cannot allow Florida State to dominate the backboard. Henderson coming off of a good game. Spot up three. No good. Ojo with the big rebound. Quick shots will lead to transition points for Florida State. They got a three. That one looked like it partially was blocked. Maverick Rowan came in and deflected it. Isaac didn't see him. On the trail here. So, oh, I think he got a little bit of arm. Yeah, that should have been a foul. Jonathan Isaac should have been on the foul line. It's a really good offici officiating crew here tonight. They missed one there. Jamie Lucky, Brian O'Connell, Sean Hall, the officials tonight. Teddy Capita, 23 in for North Carolina. Year seven, who was victimized by Isaac on the offensive end, gets a seat next to Mark Godfrey. And folks, watch the defensive pressure on ball by Florida State. And what it does is it forces you to initiate your offense way out there on the floor, which helps your defense on the backside. Maverick Rowan drives it. It's open with the left. He lays it up and in. And that's what the ball reversal can do. you got to get this Florida State defensive team moving and get angles and look to attack. Down low, foul. That's on Capita, and you can see the size advantage. Brought by Isaac, brought by Ojo. We haven't seen the seven foot four guy yet. We are drafting a forward performance, and you'll see what that means when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy. Proud sponsor of the 2017 John R. Wooden Player of the Year. And in part by Expedia. Travel the world better. NC State 4, Jonathan Isaac takes a rest. Uh, his arm may hurt. They've taken eight shots. He's taken five. Chad Fords, top five. And you got two players on this floor tonight, including Isaac and Dennis Smith Jr., Josh Jackson, Ball, and Fultz. So we're a point guard heavy there on the left side of the screen with Smith Jr. as well. Again, Carl Ravitch, LaFonso Ellis. It is a special night when you have two of the top five potential draft picks on the floor. And it's also a special night when you wear a tie. You look ravishing, <laughs> Carl Ravitch. Last week, I didn't wear the tie. We had a terrific game. If this game is lopsided, that's going to be a problem. And uh, when I knew there were going to be upwards of 20 or so scouts, 18 NBA teams represented, Isaac brought his A game. I had to bring mine. Oh, you brought it. I had to bring Big mine. time. And how about Danny Ferry there getting caught with ice? <laughs> Coming out of the break, the Phil Kofer entrance and the bucket. And I really love both freshmen that we pointed out tonight. Dennis Smith Jr. is an exceptional right, point guard. Goes. Can really get in the gaps, and that's what he's going to have to do tonight. It's going to be difficult for him to get all the way to the rim, so that pull-up J is going to have to knock it down. And we've already seen the unbelievable versatility from Jonathan Isaac. Bacon three. Off offensive glass work done and an offensive rebound, and they're picking up a ton of those early. Jarquez Smith, the senior on the floor. Leonard Hamilton will go 10 12 deep. They're going to call the foul on Torin Dorn. And Ravi, we said that earlier. If you turn the basketball over against Florida State, you allow them second chance opportunities, you have no shot at beating this team. 11 players mentioning how Leonard Hamilton uses his team. Raton Mays, three was online, offensive rebound, easily put in by Bacon. 
And this is the risky run if you're going to play small, which is what NC State's doing right now. Tremendous length on this Florida State team, and we've seen it early and often here, especially on the offensive glass. I think North Carolina State's going to have to come out of that zone and play man. A boo, good, good dish. Jordan travels. One of those games, too, if you're Smith Jr., not to get frustrated. You're down early. You can see the skill level of Florida State. Stay in your lane. Yeah, and what you what they do, Rav, when you get in there, you have to make a very quick decision to score or to pass. All that length that Florida State has really impacts you on the defensive end as well. Five offensive rebounds, Florida State, zero NC State. Baseline open. Oh, a missed dunk there from Pofer. He was high above the rim. And Ravi, much like when we saw North Carolina State last week, when they rebound the basketball in the defensive end, I think they have to play with a little more pace. You got to look to try to get some easy ones in transition. It's a losing cause to go against this tenacious half-court defense of Florida State as Yurt Seven knocks down a, a big shot here. The big two. They haven't had a three yet. This is a team we saw them against Syracuse. Mm -hmm. Maverick Rowan made eight on his own. They're going to have to knock down some outside shots to stay close tonight. Yard seven, bumped him, shot from Kofer in the corner. He got it. That's the same guy that just went about three feet over the rim, shooting a three to make it 14-6. And, folks, he's only made three so far on the year, but that's the shot he's worked on. And, boy, it gives them another weapon on the perimeter if he can knock it down consistently. Three ball misses. Kofer has been an impact player here in a couple of minutes with a rebound. He really missed Kofer last year, had to miss the entire season with foot injury. And folks, when you're playing against a team like Florida State with such length, when you catch that basketball inside, you have to make a quick decision either to score or to pass. Look what the hesitation did right there by Torin Dorn. He wasn't decisive, wasn't quick with his decision. Turnover there for Florida State. Three new players into the game for Florida State. Isaac back in the game. Come off the bench, fire up a shot. That's what Angola Rodas did there, and he missed it. <laughs> also one of the game is Trent Forrest, who wears number three. He'll have the ball on the inbounds. We're going to get a call here. Moving screen there. Jarkez Smith, yes. And look at this pressure, Rob. They just, this pressure from Florida State is relentless. They guard you 94 feet and just wears on you. And plus, they're throwing 13 guys at you. That's what wears. They don't get tired down the stretch. I think maybe one of the things we've seen with a team like Notre Dame lately, mm -hmm. they've gotten a little tired, looked a little tired. There's a steal. There's the dish to Isaac, who got fouled by Yurt Seven. And he'll go to the free throw line. But this is this is bringing in fresh reserves every couple of minutes, and they're good, skilled players. Yeah, and, and they just don't give you a break. I mean, we've talked so much about the brilliance of Dennis Smith Jr., number four in red, and he's been absolutely smothered here early, not able to take advantage of his creativity and speed because of the pressure from Florida State. I think it's important to note, as you saw those numbers, that Isaac had two points against Clemson when they scored 109. And from Leonard Hamilton to everybody involved with the team said he may have been the happiest guy coming off the floor at the end of the game because they won and yeah. they played well as a team. That says something especially about a freshman, his maturity as they yes. keep the press on. I talked to Dwayne Bacon uh, before the game and I said, what's the difference between this year and last year? And he said, you know what? Those young freshmen come to work every day and they energize the rest of us. And obviously Jonathan Isaac, number one in white, is the centerpiece of that enthusiasm. Got to get some high ball screens here and try to allow Dennis Smith to get downhill. He drove. He was blocked by Isaac. And Florida State's got a chance here. They give it to Ojo, who finishes. Good extra pass for the dunk, and it's 18-6. They want to score another 100 tonight. And folks, this game is about decisions. 
Went down the lane and watch this quick decision here. A little extra pass. Ocho throws it down. Jonathan Isaac, who started this game by scoring the first seven points, has now shown his defensive abilities. That all play, that whole play started with his block. Mm -hmm. And you're NC State, you're down 18-6. You know that there's going to be pressure every which way, so how do you handle this? What do you do? Well, what they're trying to do is they're keeping the basketball out of Dennis Smith's hands. Wherever he is, they're double teaming him. So I think you got to put a second guard on the floor so when the ball is reversed, you now have another playmaker. The problem right now with this lineup for North Carolina State, they don't have enough playmakers who can create plays off the bounce. Torin Doran got the offensive rebound. Tough shot. We're going to get a foul, and that was a benefit foul. Darius Hicks really didn't have anywhere to go with it. He threw it up with his left hand. Yeah. Got the benefit of a bump. I think you got to get the young. He's only a freshman, but I think you got to get Markel Johnson, yeah. number 11 in red, into this game. Got to get another playmaker on the floor. Right now, North Carolina State is rattled. Dennis Smith 0 for 2 tonight. He's played every minute to your point. You're bringing in Markel Johnson, the freshman, 6'1", 164 out of Cleveland, Ohio, to help handle the ball. But again, you just look at the size when you think about Isaac on the floor and Ojo on the floor. And Darius Hicks right now is on the line, hadn't even played in the last two games. So it's forcing Mark Godfrey to have to go deep into his rotation. Should be noted that B.J. Anya is not here. Coach's decision, he's a big body. He's a 6'9", 300 plus pounder. The coach's decision uh, sent home from practice on Monday and did not make the trip here to NC State. So they're missing the body, but that's what Mark Gottfried decided to do. See how they're pushing it now. Now can you get the right spacing with Markel Johnson on the floor? Because he'll push it, but you got to get guys spaced up. I'm not sure I like this lineup here. I think you got to get a boo back into the lineup. I don't know if you saw that, but it looked like Markel got away with a push-off. They're going to call the foul on Angola Rodas. All Florida State. One of the reasons uh, they're big. Like one of the tallest teams in the country at over 6'7". Height in basketball does matter. We'll talk about that when we come back. We're back, folks, with Florida State leading NC State 18-6. And Ravi, before we went into break, Florida yeah. State is the second tallest team in the nation in college basketball, only to Central Florida. The Milwaukee Bucks tallest is the tallest team in the NBA by about a quarter inch over these guys. Talking about their length. Now, tall is relative. Take all 450 players in the league and stack them on top of each other, and they're 200 feet taller than the tallest building in Dubai, the Burj Khalifa. Did you know that? No. Why would anybody know that? Well, I would have thought you would have visited. I have not been there. I, I think that's the building Tom Cruise jumped out of in his last movie. Really? Yeah. Blindfolded? Uh, no, he could see. Okay. Okay. That would have been a better idea. Jumping <laughs> off a building at 2,900 feet tall. I would have needed to have been blindfolded. I, I couldn't take it. That <laughs> building in Dubai. Smith Jr., good pass. A boom. Got bumped. Call the foul on Angola Rodas has picked up a couple here. And Ravi, last thing here. What do you know, people like you who are a little vertically challenged. Whoa, 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 if, whoa, whoa, if whoa, you whoa. Take their weight in consideration. Over a hundred thousand pounds, as much as 16 or more hippos. Let's go back to the vertically challenged. Well, you didn't. You sitting on two cushions right there, to trying to make yourself taller. How many there. cushions you sitting on? <laughs> got Come on, guy. Your height needs to sit on three of them. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going to go with the tall building. I knew there was something cooking in the mind of Kim Belton, our producer, and you. And that, that's a dangerous combination in the kitchen. I'm trying to get my Bill Walton swerve on. How'd I do? Hey, what if you threw Bill into the mix? You'd be way <laughs> over that building. All right. Florida State up by 10. NC State's uh, two for their last nine. The scoring drought has been about two and a half minutes long. Isaac fades away and hits another one. Yeah, and, and Ravi, though they're a bit smaller, from an offensive standpoint, I like this lineup that NC State has in a little bit better. Two guards on the floor that can handle the rock, and you got three other guys who can actually score some baskets. So let's see if North Carolina State can get something going on the offensive end here. 
about the intensity, I was going to say it just before the foul of XRM on the defensive end. He's worked so hard to improve that. Hey, Thursday, Rivalry Week, big double dip we got for you, 8 o'clock. Tobacco Roads, big battle. Duke's starting to play a lot better. They take on UNC at 8, Cameron Indoor, then Poly Pavilion, Oregon, and UCLA. The Sonic Blockbusters stream live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. And of course, game day, midweek trip, they'll be there Thursday at Cameron. And a Smith by Ojo. And a lot of bodies there to meet him. You had 6, 9, and 7, 1 at the bucket to greet him. Oh, oh he just missed him. And there was that length we saw on display on the defensive end for Florida State. I love the early push. Now can you get proper space and you get looks. There's a pass wide open three. Got it with that and he does. Good ball movement that time and set up the three. And Terry Henderson is coming off a 21 point game against Miami. Hit five of six three pointers. Brings him within 11, uh, within nine. And Ravi, that's the early push that we talked about. And I like this lineup. Now can NC State get stops and keep this tall Florida State team off the offensive glass? Ojo, tough shot, fading away. Not the shot that Leonard Hamilton wants, but go get the offensive rebound. Walker, alley-oop, he had his man. And Isaac brought him down, and then out of nowhere came Henderson to slap it away. And folks on the other side, watch the size that takes place here. When you get that, wow, look at that, folks. That's two near seven footers up there taking away the airspace for Dennis Smith Jr. That is impressive. I'm tell you, with the flow he's got on top there, he's, he's seven feet. Yeah, no doubt. And, and that's what happens, though, Rav, is we talked about decisions earlier. When you get down there, you know that Jonathan Isaac is coming. Chris Kumaji is coming. Michael Ojo are coming, which means that now you have two or three guys who are open out on the perimeter. So you got to be a playmaker when you get in the gut against this Florida State team. Right. So Ojo goes out. You mentioned Chris Kumaji has come in. He is seven foot four. Isaac goes out for a rest. Forrest goes out. C.J. Walker's been in for a little bit. He is probably the heir apparent at point guard. He'll mm -hmm. pick up Johnson now on the front court. Look at how they pick you up and dog you for 94 feet. How many teams in the country outside of West Virginia and maybe Oklahoma State do you see doing that? Causes problems. They don't even get into a play until there's 15 on the shot clock. Maverick Rowan, and that's the seven foot forehand of Kumaje, who helped out. He's trailing here, banking all the way to the bucket. He's gotten a few easy ones off of uh, blocks on the defensive end. Bad shots, quick shots lead to transition baskets for Florida State. You're going in amongst the trees of the tall buildings in Dubai and trying to get a shot on. That ain't easy. Uh, no. <laughs> that ain't easy. <laughs> and those buildings move. <laughs> Look at this link, folks. Bothering Maverick Rowan shot. Bad shots, turnovers lead to transition points. This is the most explosive transition team in the ACC at 20 transition points per game. That is amazing. So they just brought in Kumaje, who stands at 7'4". And you could argue Isaac is taller than 6'10". He's grown seven inches in the last four years. Ojo is seven feet over 300 pounds, and that's just solid muscle. And the Bucks have a 7'1", four 6'11s, a 6'10", and two 6'9 guys. That's, a, that's an impressive front line here. Wow. <laughs> Or depressing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. See, Godfrey's called him in a timeout. He's very frustrated the way the team is operating on the offensive end. But again, you're taking it in among some big fellas. And Terry Henderson now bangs in another one. But look where that one came off of. Another shot for Carolina, for North Carolina State that they were able to get off of a drive and kick. They need more of it here to try to get back in this game. Only down 10. for a big dish, good one. Fuck out! Woo! 7-4 flood. Burj Khalifa, that one. Burj Khalifa. That is, wow. This team, along with North Carolina, out of the ACC are built to win a national championship. Get it out of here, says Kumaje. Walker, all the way, he had it deflected. Great pass, Bacon with a finish.
Oh, they are having fun tonight here at Florida State. The ball, the body movement, the awareness on the offensive end of where the open guy is. Spectacular. Another deflected pass. Kumaje picks up the foul. Not a good take, but here's a couple of uh, subsequent trips that ended with the ball being slammed through the basket. That's just ridiculous. I mean, to be able to move that basketball from left to right, and now he comes back down the other end, and if you don't bump him first to freeze, now you give him too much space, and man, Bacon. We talked about him in the open, the ultimate finisher for the Seminoles. I mean, you just don't get a break. Xavier Rathan Mays goes out of the game. He's dogging you for 94 feet. In comes C.J. Walker, who's dogging you for 94 feet. This is an impressive defensive display here by Florida State. One thing Leonard Hamilton tells you about this team is their closeness is Bacon spots up for a three, and he doesn't need anything. We're under the eight-minute mark, and Florida State is off to a flying, literally, start. They've got 27 points. And all sorts of them come after a block. The result is a flush, and we'll be back after this. Protocol, I got you. I love what you're doing there. See, he knew it. Mission Impossible, MI. That's Adnan and Andy Katz back in our studio. They'll bring us the halftime report. Florida State, he's 11 guys. They're up 27-15, and they stay in this press. They've really neutralized. Dennis Smith, who is... One of the top players in the country and on the mock draft board will go in the top five, 0 for 3 tonight. Yeah, and the turnover there. And that's a great example of what they've been able to do. And look at the frustration on his face. The game plan coming in for Florida State was to keep Dennis Smith Jr. on one side of the floor. Keep him on one third of the floor, take away the other two thirds. That has worked beautifully tonight. Lane open, that time cut off, and the ball off of a boo, so a bad break for North Carolina State after some good defense. And for North Carolina State, there's a lot of time, but you've got to be able to get some stops and not allow Florida State to dominate the offensive glass the way they have. They have seven offensive rebounds in this game in the first half. 214th in the nation when it comes to defensive efficiency. A bad matchup for NC State. Mm -hmm. It's really been their story all season long is the inability to come up with a stop when they needed one. Another offensive rebound. And a foul will be on Smith Jr. as he came underneath. Nope, they're going to call that. On Abu. On the road, Rav. You can't give teams second chance opportunities. And your defensive rotations have to be crisp, making sure that you're getting bodies on guys as the basketball is going up. And Abu picks up his second. Again, we mentioned B.J. Anya back at home as the coaches decided not to bring him along on this trip. So Abu's got two. You got all this height that keeps funneling in. They've used mm -hmm. 11 players tonight. B.J. misses. wonder how tough this is for Smith Jr. who throws up an air ball. Yeah, that's a frustration shot right there. Bacon to the lane, finger roll, doesn't get it to go, but he picks up the foul. Well, Kansas may be on their way to winning, or at least a share of their 13th consecutive Big 12 championship. Mm -hmm. Top of the ACC, you mentioned North Carolina and their height. Virginia is right there as well. And this, this may not be a reflection of how good Florida State is because NC State is really down. But you certainly see they have the elements to be as good as any team in the country. You talk about some size. Mm -hmm. uh, Raton Mays, who's become a really good point guard. Mm -hmm. Shooters. Mm -hmm. And depth. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a guy who can make a difference when the offense is not clicking off the bench is a guy we haven't seen yet, number five, P.J. Savoy can flat out shoot the rocks. Already made eight threes on the season in the game against Nicholas State. He's in now. Smith Jr. looking for some open space. Henderson's been the only guy who's hit, but he misses that one. And the defensive rebound to Florida State. 
Savoy is open and he throws it away, does Raton Mays. And Ravi, if you can't change sides of the floor, strong side to weak side against a strong defensive team, you have no shot. I mean, look at Xavier Rattan Mays. As soon as Dennis Smith catches the rock, he's dogging him the entire time. A little tough shot. Contested Isaac came out and he knew it. He picks up the foul. In that Clemson 109-61 win, they forced 22 turnovers. Tonight, they have forced five turnovers, but there's been a handful of block shots, deflected passes. Coaches love to talk about deflections and just making life difficult on the offensive end. FSU has done that tonight. Yeah, the, the pressure has been relentless. Uh, they've not allowed Dennis Smith Jr., a sensational freshman for NC State, to get any room to be able to make plays in the middle of the floor. They kept him on one third of the floor. So again, the game plan has been beautifully executed for Florida State. Ball fake from door, access denied that time. Looked like Isaac went up, but so did Jarquez Smith. They like to give him the block. Savoy spots three, got three. Why not bring that weapon off the bench when you have a big lead? And here they go again, three on one. Look at the patience by Xavier Rattan Mays. And he hits a tough shot, cutting across the lane. Last year, Rav, as soon as he caught that one, that was going up. But that's the maturation process that this kid has undergone, understanding when to, when not to. That was brilliant. Dorn open three, no good, easy rebound. And FSU having their way right now with NC State. You gotta get on Savoy. Less than a minute, he's banged two threes. And folks, that's that dude that I was talking about that comes off the bench when you're in the NCAA tournament offense. Oh, nice finish there by Boo. And you need something to get going on the offensive end. <laughs> P.J. Savoy, number five there, is the guy to do that. Isaac thought about it instead. A little jump hook from Smith that misses. Feels like they've made everything. They're actually shooting less than 50%. They're 14 of 30. Tough shot. Smith drifting to his left misses badly. And when you get frustrated against a defensive team, you start to settle. That was a settle J right there. Foul on the body. Speaking of frustrating, Maverick Rowan. He has yet to get going. Only one of two. He picked up his second foul. But Leonard Hamilton has rebuilt programs in this. Currently may be the best team he's ever had. Well, look at that face right there, Rav. He told me earlier today, whether he's happy, sad, things are going well, not well, that's the face that you're going to get, that poker face, because he's always thinking. Ah, Lady Gaga reference. I see you were into the Super Bowl, the poker face. I no doubt it. about it. I see what you're Do we know if she down. landed safely when she caught the football? We, we don't know that she landed safely or that she actually jumped off the building because camera work. I, where did she jump to? Yeah. Then all of a sudden, the. Lines appeared next door is very good. Very good. I, I thought it was great. A little bit of something for everybody. And the outcome was great. Yeah, depending on who you root for. Well, I mean, it was a great game. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know a whole lot of Atlanta Falcons people who are uh, talking like about, talk about depression. Didn't like it. They're experiencing a little bit right now. How about the pressure that's being put on again by Florida State? Rowan contested. Every shot's contested. Rowan. That one over the outstretched arm of Isaac. Yeah, and look what the ball reversal does. And that's what NC State has been unwilling to do on a consistent basis to get good looks. Nice move. Smith may have hurt his hand or his wrist. He's holding it. Kel Johnson looked like he got away with the steps. He was looking for a foul. Reverse layup. Henderson got a little sloppy here in the last couple of minutes. So when it gets sloppy and people get hurt, we'll take a timeout. 18 point advantage for the Knowles here at home. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by USAA. Insurance, banking, and investments tailored for the military community. And Snickers. You're off your game when you're hungry. Eat a Snickers. Ah. Fonzie, go ahead. 67. How'd I do, AK? 
68. When I quizzed his players during ACC Media Day, they had no idea. He's the best looking 68 year old you'll find. And, and stoic, too. <laughs> and while Adnan has his movie thing, yeah. Leonard Hamilton has a music thing. Leonard Hamilton collects all sorts of old concert DVDs that he can find, really? records. Oh, my goodness. We're, we're talking about Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons, Michael Jackson, old stuff. Jackson 5, when Michael was really, really wow. young. All these things. Patty LaBelle. Ooh, I like some Patty now. Sits in a chair, listens to the tunes. He also has his own gospel record label. Isaac throws it up wow. and gets it to go with the left. Right in front of a lot of those NBA scouts. I mean, folks, all of his talents are on display tonight. Look at this. This is 6'10", folks, taking the contact. Look at the eyes and the body control and able to get it up on the glass. And then you talk about a special talent, folks. Enjoy him now because you won't see him next year. <laughs> No, you're not going to. Well, you may in the NBA. You're not going to see him here at Florida State. I thought beginning of the season uh, to this point that Jackson from Kansas had taken sort of the biggest leap. Isaac's given him a real run for that as a freshman who has started and just continued to grow. We've seen every aspect of his game tonight. Yeah, and, and what's, what's crazy about it, Rav, is he doesn't really need to make a big splash on the offensive end for them to be successful, but I like that splash right there. Forty-three, twenty-one. He was very happy when the team won, and even though he only scored two points, but you get the sense tonight he was motivated to do a little more than, than the two-point contribution. He's got a little fresh legs, and it's showing. This is a team that's made a living on turnovers and fast breaks. They got nine fast break points tonight. 38 points in the paint per game. They already have 18 of those. And Maverick Rowan finally buries a three. Ball reversal has been really good for NC State. For them to climb back into this game, I think on misses, especially with this lineup in, they've got to run and try to get some quick opportunities. Forget about Ojo, who started the game as a very active participant in the middle. He's back in the game. Well, folks, when you drive into the hoop and you get contact, watch his eyes, folks. Eyes surely make, look at the concentration. A little levitation there, and he never took his eyes off of the basket until the ball went into the rim. You young folks watching at home, you young ballers, that's how you do it when you go into the rack. 40 offensive rebounds that he has on the season tie with Ojo for first. Rowan gets that to go. Good shot. Rowan. So he's got the last five points. There's five Florida State players waiting to come into the game. Five. And it's not like there's an A and a B unit. <laughs> That's exactly right. Three-pointer misses. Henderson three, way short, and he didn't follow his shot. One on three, why not? That's the way it's gone for Florida State. Walker missed, and there to pick it up was Angola Rodas. 12 different players have started, have played tonight for Florida State. Rivalry week Saturday, 14th ranked Seminoles. They're in South Bend to take on the Irish, and their name have their eyes on this one. Then McKean Pavilion, that's where College Game Day will be on their back end. They go to Cameron, then they go to St. Mary's, undefeated Gonzaga. At St. Mary's, arch rivals, understand. Both games ESPN on the app and watch ESPN. And folks, that Gonzaga St. Mary's game Ooh. for St. Mary's to even have a shot. Jock Landale has to stay out of foul trouble because when he goes out of the basketball game, they lose a 17 and 10 guy, and then they get a little small and they won't be able to have, handle the interior size of Gonzaga. For Tan Mays, no offensive rebound. Doesn't want to try it again. Bacon off his foot. Good hustle, hustle on the floor by Rowan. They got a two on one. There you go. Maverick Rowan deserves some hustle points yes, there. And Gottfried let him know. I love that kid. He's, so, he's such a tough and rugged kid. 24 and red. Maverick Rowan. Steps. 
him. This kid had 31 the other night, eight threes, but he's showing he's not just a shooter, giving up his body to be able to get a possession, and NC State finishes one in transition. Need a lot more of those to get back in this game. They got to get a little momentum carrying them into the halftime. Plays like that will do it. And so uh, as they clean the floor up, you just talked about St. Mary's Gonzaga. We get Carolina and Duke. And we also have UCLA and Oregon. So which is the which is the best game of those three? I'm have to stay East Coast, man. Really? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm have to stay East Coast. Oregon, UCLA. Yeah, or, that now from a scoring standpoint, that's that's going to be off the charts. But uh, again, North Carolina with the way they push the basketball up the floor and just all of the the history of the North Carolina Duke matchup. I think most of the eyeballs are going to be on that game. Teddy Kapita back in the game had a chance there. Good pass from Smith Jr. He lost it and then he rushed the pass. Again off 109 point effort. They're close to 50 again here in the first half. Foul on the floor on Smith Jr. That's one thing I'm enjoying. I've watched them all year long, but this is my first time getting a chance to do their game live. I'm so happy for Xavier Rattan Mays. I mean, he's shown the ability to be able to score the ball in the past, a little bit erratic. I think a little frustrated because he kind of wasn't the guy last year. Yep. But this year, he's really assumed the point guard responsibilities. He's been a leader on this team. Not as easy to do. Dennis Smith Jr. He talked about his draft status and the scouts that are here. Mm -hmm. Almost 20 points a game. Triple double in that game against Syracuse. He has been held scoreless so far tonight. And folks, Florida State has thrown everything at him. They've double teamed him coming off ball screens, kept him on one side of the floor. I think everybody's guarded him on the staff except for the training staff over there. I mean, they've thrown everyone at that kid. And Leonard Hamilton. <laughs> Who could at 67 still guard him with a straight face? With a straight face. All right. That's a poker face. I agree with you. 45 28 with 15 to go here in the first half. Got an attack here. A boo. Baseline jumper. Net. About eight seconds. What kind of shot we're going to get? Uh, dribble, drive, and kick. How about a three? Jonathan Isaac, outstanding, 17 points. Dennis Smith, none. Our score at the half, lopsided. FSU 45, NC State 30. Adnan and Andy, double A's in the studio. By Wendy's. Back at the Donald Tucker Center, all sorts of fun being had by Florida State and their fans tonight. They're up 45, 30, second straight game with a 15 point lead at halftime. Uh, so 45 30 you know as a broadcaster you like to have the close games and that was the early look we went with the purple tie out of respect for Alfonso Ellis we're done because this this led to a blowout we've had three really good competitive mm -hmm. close games that I've had the sort of blessing to call and here we are tonight it's 15 I get we're gonna we're gonna try something you back to casual Wednesdays yeah. I like that I'd now like that to get to competitive Wednesday now that you've loosened up maybe yeah. NC State will loosen up as well but uh -huh. this is the story in the first half look at these plays stoic coach Hamilton on the side there more points in the paint stoic on the side look at these now block shots stoic and now all of a sudden a huge finish and look at the eyes another great play down the lane Coach Ham, stoic, looking exactly like you look when I make jokes. <laughs> stoic or stone-faced? Both, stoic. <laughs> Isaac was outstanding, his 17 points, the most since he had 19 at Syracuse. His career high is 23. All the numbers plus side for Florida State. And the uh, biggest number, perhaps, Dennis Smith, no points. That's the first time he's been held scoreless in a half all season long. And, boy, Rattan Mays has been a pain in his butt. And I tell you what, that's what... 
Xavier Rattan Mays has done to many point guards this year. He is absolutely relentless. Picks you up 94 feet. We talked about what that does to your offense, folks. When you pick up that way and you're denying the wings, it forces you to initiate your offense. Look at where he is. He's near half court. Makes your passes longer and allows your defense to be able to rotate and get to guys more quickly. Maverick rowing three. No, your seven knocks that one in for a tip in. All right, so what was the message from Mark Archery then at half? Guys, we have to move the basketball to move the defense and then look to attack. And you can't be scared when you go in there. If you're going to go in there, you got to go to dunk the basketball. If you're not going to dunk it, look to move the basketball to the weak side. They had success there on that last play. I'd like to see more of it here in the second half. And misses the three. Ojo can't get it to go. Isaac picks it up and goes up with it. They're going to get a foul, it looks like, on your seven. That's just unfair. I mean, it's like playing volleyball underneath there for Florida State with the length that they have. I mean, 6'10", 7 feet, Aaron Ojo. Their length is just ridiculous. Aaron Seven picks up his third personal foul. The strength of his game is versatility. This kid grew from 6'2 to 6'10, folks, in three years. And Look at Leonard Hamilton. We actually see some teeth there, though, but historic there as well. I asked him yesterday, I said, is it, are you enjoying it more that the team is having such success? And he was pretty quick to say, I, wins and losses don't define whether I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. uh, then I sort of said, maybe enjoy is the wrong word. Are you having more fun when you win? I mean, he's just gotten a big kick out of the, the closeness of the group. I mean, you see them, they're always hugging and punching and having fun with each other. It's just something that he says isn't necessarily that you see every year. And he sees it this year. Wow, a smile. Got chicklets. Right. You got, got chicklets. To him. You've gotten to him. That affects your smile of yours. Gotten to him. Uh oh. First bucket of the night for Dennis Smith Jr. A baseline jam. Maybe that can get them going. They're only down 12, folks, here. Now, can you put a couple stops together and get a couple baskets? If you can get this thing under 10, psychologically, it changes and could give this team some much-needed momentum, but you've got to be able to close out shooters. Not so fast, says Dwayne Bacon, 6'7", 221-pound sophomore. That's just straight-up uncured bacon right there. And that's 34 consecutive games, and he has scored double digits in points, 34. Yurt Seven had the angle there to attack the basket, and we talked about being fearless as Dennis Smith Jr. was there. They need more of it. Yurt Seven's got to be a bit more aggressive when he catches that basketball in the painted area. Smith took the body and was able to control his own for the layup. And let's see if that can get his jump shot going. Dan Mays knocks that down, his jump shot going. Look at this, folks. 94 feet in your grill all night long. And Isaac there to help. Your seven in the lane kicks it to Henderson for a three. No good. Hey, Rob, you see how your seven's not even looking at the rim when he catches the basketball? You got to look at the rim. He's got to be more aggressive here. They need some offensive production from number 14 in red. After some protestations from Mark Gottfried and other NC State players, referees get together and decide it's NC State ball. Isaac comes out. Phil Kofer comes in. <laughs> so you get a little bit shorter, but uh, Phil Kofer can absolutely explode off the floor. Smith Jr., no. You're at seven. Oh, he put it on the floor. Tough against those Giants, and he has it put away. We talked about in the first half how you have to make quick decisions. He was indecisive there, and that led to that short shot. Bacon wants another one. Got another one. Folks, he was six of nine from three in that Clemson blowout. Rowan got it. Good play. He held on to it long enough after he took the bang, and he gets the bucket. And he keeps NC State within distance. Rabbi, I love the attack early. He realizes he's got numbers, and Colfer not at a good angle to take a charge. Anytime they've been able to get through that first wave of the trap, and they've been able to attack, they've been successful. All right, the Stoic Leonard Hamilton wants to talk it over. We've seen NC State penetrate a few times. We'll be right back.
storylines in the ACC recently. The Orange have won five in a row, close games, overtime games. Virginia is only one back of the ACC lead. Notre Dame has really struggled. And North Carolina and Duke meet again on Thursday, the 243rd all-time meeting. Just look at the schedule. Florida State down the stretch. They have at Notre Dame, a team that's down right now. At Pitt, BC, Clemson, Duke is really their big test. And then they get Miami at home. North Carolina's got a gauntlet. You saw Virginia's got a tough yeah. stretch. There's a good chance Florida State finds themselves at the top of this when it's all said and done. Yeah, Florida State had their gauntlet early in the year, achieved it six straight top teams, five, five and one, one. Yep. during that time. And obviously they get a little bit more of a relaxed schedule. And you know what's interesting about that though, Raps? So here they're playing against a team that they're they, they're more superior than, and yet we've seen no let up on either end of the floor. That bodes well for the Seminoles down the stretch. The other part about having so many guys play, remember they played 12 in the first half. Ojo, a little help from your seven, but when you play that many and you know there's substitutes on the bench, mm -hmm. well, you're kind of motivated to play hard all the time. Otherwise, we've got four guys that can replace you, right? Yeah, and, and typically as an athlete, you're, if you don't know when you're going to be taken out of the game, sure. you can kind of conserve, take a play off, a possession off, that kind of thing. You don't see that from these guys because they know at the right time that Coach Hamilton is going to get them out of there to maintain their freshness, which maintains their intensity level. And we've seen that all throughout this game tonight. Ojo's free throw shooting has gone through the roof. This mm -hmm. is a graduate already. And he's one of these dudes that uh, during the summer, one of the assistant coaches saw him with a suit driving around Tallahassee. And he said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to one of the hotels. They have a, they have a business course. So he actually went to a business course, because that's what he wants to do is business. Mm. Unsolicited, just went into a hotel where they were having a business summer. <laughs> really? He wasn't assigned, he just went in. Wants to be a pilot someday, or run his own airline, and yet he's afraid of flying. It's a little odd. Can you imagine Ojo, the size of that guy, in a pilot seat? That'd have to be a specially made <laughs> front cabin of the airplane for that big dude. My goodness. But I tell you what, he's smart as a whip, and if anybody could do it, it'd be him. Sat out last year with a torn meniscus, and just being on the bench perhaps gave him a yeah. different perspective. And given that he's like a sponge wanting to learn, he, he took in a lot of things by not playing, and it certainly benefited him this year and he is unlike uh, unlike his head coach he's not afraid to smile he's yeah. always he's like the fawns of FSU <laughs> he's just smiling all the time <laughs> body like that if you're uh, an NBA team I mean look he's seven one mm -hmm. he's a physical specimen mm -hmm. He's shown an ability to get better and better. Take a chance on him in the NBA draft? Well, I think what I'm looking at is his feet. Can he guard against ball screens? And when it's necessary in short clock situations, can he sit down, get wide, and make a guard take a contested jump shot? I think he can. Three on the shot clock. Two, Smith forces. And it goes. Dennis Smith mm -hmm. catches a little fire here in the second half. That dunk that he got on the baseline. All of a sudden, now you've had to take some tough shots in the first half. Don't have it going. If you, a good shooter, when he can see the basketball go through the net, it can raise their confidence, and they're going to need that confidence from him down the stretch. Nice play on the baseline by Terrence Mann, who lays it in. Got numbers here. You got to push. Look to attack hard. They did. And Rowan gets the layup to go. The timeout probably called because more offensive rebounds, and they're getting points in the paint here in the second half. They really are. Rowan runs into and knocks down Rattan Mays. Take a timeout. Lead was 15 at the half. It's currently 16. Smith Jr. doing his part. He's off the schneid in the second half. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Quicksilver card from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back every purchase, everywhere. And X, find your magic. Your doubleheader starts Thursday, 8 o'clock Eastern time. There's a guy that knows a thing or two about the Duke North Carolina rivalry. Danny Ferry. Serious history. This will be meeting 243. Carolina has had the upper hand, although not recently. Duke's won 11 of the last 15. Be really interesting to see a healthy and complete Duke team and how they handle North Carolina. Yeah, Christian Leitner gets a lot of the praise and deservedly so for winning 
so many national titles while he was in college as Ojo lays one in there. But I tell you what, I had a chance to play against Danny Ferry when I was a freshman at Notre Dame. He was at Duke, unguardable. <laughs> Six ten, deep range on that J. Danny Ferry is a tough college player, smooth player, mm -hmm. good co good executive. Like Ojo, you can't move his body when he gets inside that paint. What do you think about the feet as he comes over and gives some help? See how he moves? Yep. Rattan Mays on a fast break, kicks it to Mann. He lost it, but Kofor comes up with it. Now, now Ravi, he's not Steven Adams, but what a pass. Vision, some yeah. vision from Ojo. It, it, it helps when you're 7-1 and can look over the top <laughs> and see the backside. But I talked about Steven Adams when he was at Pitt that he was going to play in the NBA for at least 10 years. Everybody thought I was crazy. Careful. And Ojo's in the middle here waiting for a pass for a dunk. There it is. And there it is. Ojo's taking over. He's letting you know that he thinks he can get a few years in the league there, Ralph. <laughs> too big and too strong. Lead to 22. Did you ever play on a team anywhere, any level that was so deep? I'm not so deep, but I played against a guy that's a uh, big guy like Ojo. Uh, when I played for the Minnesota Timberwolves, uh, Coach Flip Saunders got upset with our bigs and pulled them out and put me in as an undersized power forward to guard Shaq. <laughs> and, uh, I'm going to let you know that Shaq had the uh, better end of that deal. Michael Ojo just, and you know what? Rabbi, he does his job so well. He does a tremendous job of moving his feet on ball screens, keeping guards from turning the corner, makes himself big in the middle of the lane, gets on the offensive glass, runs the floor. Michael Ojo is the perfect complement to this high-octane offense with all these perimeter players on this Florida State team. And the way Mark Godfrey put it to his team during practice, you're going, oh, good play there by Mann who got fouled and then looks over to his bench. In any event, the way that Godfrey put it about uh, Ojo to his team, you're going to face the biggest man I've ever seen. The strongest and biggest man I've ever seen. As if to sort of relay the message. And you talk to the Florida State folks, it's not as if he's a weight room junkie. He right. doesn't spend a lot of time in the weight room at all. You see those pipes? That would say weight room to me, but no. I just imagine being a freshman at Florida State <laughs> and that guy walks by you on campus. You wonder, where, where are you? How'd that happen? I uh, know. And Rav, you know what? Uh, this is our first year together, and I got your back against anybody. But if he comes, not both of us gonna run. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big dude. Well, the Tam Mays had it, but he couldn't convert when he was went to shoot that fadeaway. about the work by Smith down low. Smith saw earlier in the game, he yeah, hurt his yeah, finger. He yeah. actually fractured it earlier this year. So anytime there's contact on it, it causes a great deal of pain. And uh, Jarquez Smith back in the game, the senior forward out of Georgia. And even that, Rav, we, you know, we've talked about all their physical attributes that make them a Final Four team, but even those little intangibles like that, the toughness that this team has, well built to win one. I thought he should have kept going to the rim with that speed he has. Markel Johnson, number 11, is a speech, so he should have kept going to the rack. Smith kicks it. Johnson won't take the first one. Now he dishes to Abu. And he can't get it to go. Man with the rebound. Yeah, the three-point shot is not Markel Johnson's strength yet. It will be, but it's not now. Tries it cutting, and he gets fouled. The idea that Leonard Hamilton has been to different places, Oklahoma State, Miami, and Florida State, the fact is he has turned those programs into very good programs, yeah. tournament teams. Think about the last 10 years, Florida State has got the third most wins in the ACC behind Duke and North Carolina. Third most. Yeah. Climax was an ACC tournament championship in 2012. And the only difference really with this team is he had six seniors on that team. doesn't have that luxury on this one. Right. Thursday, you'll be able to see the two schools that are above mm -hmm. Florida State over the last 10 years in wins. Grayson Allen seems to have really settled down here 
over the last week, week and a half. So whatever the therapy is for him is certainly working. And if Duke's going to make a run, they're going to need him to be consistent. You get your little telestrator going. You got the earplugs in there at FSU. You got a little earplugs in there. Coached at Notre Dame for a year. He certainly knows what that rivalry is all about. Again, tenacious defense led to a terrible pass. And frustration shown by Henderson as he slammed the ball into the ground. North Carolina State has had no answer to the double team anywhere on the floor, whether it be in the backcourt or in the half court of Florida State tonight. They have not been able to solve that riddle. And Smith Jr. getting some rest here. We'll get the 12 minute TV timeout. Isaac dribbled it off of his own foot. Johnson comes up with it. Now he'll look to push. That's Dorn, I should say. We're going to get a block call, maybe inside the arc. That's the second on Isaac. All sorts of coaching going on on the floor. John Wooden said, be quick, but don't hurry. We'll break that theory down as we look at FSU after this. That's now down to 20. So Duke's Luke Kennard as we take a look at how he puts in elite effort to win college basketball's highest individual honor in our Wendy's Wooden Watch. What drives me is honestly the will to win, the will to get better each and every day. I love to work. I love to be in the gym. And I know that team success uh, breeds individual success, and I've kind of just had that mindset going into every single day. And we went to break with the idea of the John Wooden quote, be quick but don't hurry. Kennard sort of symbolizes some of that, doesn't he? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you can tell on his catch and shoots, he's never in a hurry. Even when you're up and pressuring him hard, he, he's always under control and gets the shot that he wants, regardless of the defense. And I, I love the way Luke Kennard plays the game, averaging about 19 points per game in ACC play. I thought early, before all that stuff broke out uh, with his team, I thought he was the, one of the leading candidates for the Wooden Award because he was flat out balling. Isaac wide open, Ooh. good contest of the basket. <laughs> Kapita, they're going to call him with the push. I'd like to see another look at that. Look like the old theory of verticality went straight up. I thought so too. Let's take a look here. Did he go into his. Yeah, that's a tough angle to see. I was trying to see if he went into his body. Tough to see. Isaac misses the free throw there. Wow. Yeah, no field goals here in the second half, but he really hasn't needed to because his team's been dominating the offensive glass. 15 offensive rebounds in this game have led to 13 second chance points, and so they've been able to score them in transition and off the offensive glass. He's two points shy of his career high, 23. He's got 21. Johnson threw that one away. Mm -hmm. Wasn't close. He kind of looked over at Maverick Rowan as yeah. if to suggest, like, I thought you were coming to get the ball. Yeah, Ravi, back, back to Luke Kennard. Obviously, we know he's a very savvy. Ooh, how about lefty. that pass? Yeah, savvy lefty in basketball. But do you know he does everything else with his right hand? <laughs> That's just ridiculous. So I asked him, I was like, Luke, why the difference? He said he just feels more comfortable playing basketball with his left hand. No, it's working. I wouldn't change it. No doubt about it. Quarterback. So he was a quarterback in high school, one of the best. In the country, did he throw right hand? I think he threw right hand. Yeah. Can you imagine the brain balance that that kid has <laughs> from left to right hemisphere? It hurts my brain to think about that. Yours and mine too. I don't know if I have enough tissue up there to even oh, think about. Oh, you got tissue up there. <laughs> Missing some free throws here as Forrest mm -hmm. attempts one. It's uh, Trent Forrest, freshman guard out of nearby, pretty Florida. That's the one thing that they haven't done well tonight. Going into those free throws, they were 11 of 20 from the foul line tonight in a close game NCAA tournament. You got to be able to knock down the free throws. Yep. Got to be careful. And it's a pretty good free throw shooting team overall. Mm -hmm. They shoot mm -hmm. almost 70% from mm -hmm. the free throw line. Tonight, 50%, 12 of 24. Johnson in the paint. Dorn, foul line, jumper in and out. Got to make those. Rep, that's another thing that I noticed too with uh, NC State. 
is when they finally get dribble penetration, the spacing's not good away from the ball, and they don't have anyone running behind the dribble as another beautiful pass underneath to a cutter enforced. So when they get dribble penetration, you got to have one guy running behind, especially with teams that deny as hard as Florida State does. There was a little be quick, but don't hurry on that last play. They were going quick on a cut, and then they made the smart pass and forced and laid it up and laid it in. And folks, look at this. Good pressure on the basketball right there and a nice little cut underneath. A little pocket pass underneath and forced with the finish. We've seen Florida State score in a variety of ways. Threes, drives to the basket, in transition, offensive rebound, putbacks. This has been a complete the dominant offensive team tonight. Tonight after the Bulls and the Warriors, it's NBA night on ESPN. Sports Center at night, Stan and Neil highlights from the NBA, the NHL, all the college basketball. Sports Center at night, up next year on ESPN. It streams live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Sports Center follows Bulls and the Warriors on ESPN. That highlight was at night. The stream went dark there for a second. <laughs> Power outage by NC State <laughs> dealt with. We've seen Dennis Smith, who was a player of the year candidate for a lot of the year. Only six points tonight, three of seven. He is two Florida State Seminoles in his back pocket all night. And every time he comes over half court, they double team him just like now. So somebody's open. And what happens in that case is your seven at seven feet tall has to turn and look at the basket. Abu got it off, but it didn't hit any part of the rim. It's a shot clock violation and more frustration for the Wolfpack. And Robert, we've seen that with Jerk Seven tonight. Even when he's caught the basketball in the painted area, he's not even looking at the rim. And if you don't open up and look at the rim, you can't find where the open guys are and make and punish them for the trap out front. Great pass. Great pass. Oh, and a missed dunk. Real good look, though, from Isaac to Smith, and he missed a boo on the other end, sends it through. There's another benefit, too, I'm sure, when you said you haven't played on a team as deep as Florida State, where they use 12 different guys. Mm -hmm. You're practicing against five yes. players that are playing every night. No, Very few teams in the country can say the same thing. So you're getting practice minutes, quality minutes that other teams don't get. Against size and length as well, along with the athleticism, and so they're pretty much prepared going into a game for almost any team that you can <laughs> any team that you can find. And that's the benefit. A lot of teams don't have that luxury. They may have a good five on the floor plus maybe two or three. This guy's got 13. And a historic fake coach. Exactly. Smith will put it up and in and out it goes. Last couple of games they've shot really well from the free throw line. Florida State shooting 90 percent tonight back down to 50. Smith Jr. looking to go one on one. He has no room, no space to go anywhere. Dorn takes it into the hole and a man down for Florida State. And Smith again with that finger. I think he may have taken one in the gut. Kiss Smith, the senior. Twice we've seen him go down, and now we're seeing him back up. I think he caught a little knee to the belly. Solar plexus. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> He's okay. Those hurt. Yeah, a little bit of bass is lost in that voice right now. For sure. Walker shot is off, and NC State comes the other way. That's another thing that's been impressive by Florida State tonight is how quickly they get back in transition defense. Henderson knocks down a three. And we made a point about all the scouts that are here watching Bacon and watching Isaac and watching Smith. In the case of Smith, what can 
scouts take away from a game like this where the defense is so good? What, what are actually the positives they can take away from a night like this? Uh, can, can, as Kofor knocks down another deep jump shot, is can you be patient and poised and not get frustrated, not allow yourself to get rattled. And I think we've only seen frustration on his face once or twice. And again, he's getting the basketball through the double team. It's been that second pass, the receiver on the second pass, that has not been aggressively attacking. And so that's not Dennis Smith's fault. He's doing his job drawing two and getting rid of the basketball. His teammates have to be more aggressive making plays on the backside. Boy, who came in, knocked down two threes in the first half. Fires one up here, and it comes off to Dorn. Smith corner. Henderson looking for another three, and he got it. Henderson just knocked down three in a row. He goes to 17 points on the night, and his fourth three-pointer of the night. And what has NC State done? They protected their backboard, got out in transition, and gotten some good looks. Under eight to go. Wait to hear from our studio crew on what Charles Oakley did tonight. Judge Oakley Justice, when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Proud sponsor of the 2017 John R. Wooden Player of the Year. And Gillette, the best a man can get. Ravi, over to you. Yeah, the Knicks PR department put out a statement saying Oakley came to the game tonight and behaved in a highly inappropriate and completely abusive manner. He's been ejected, currently being arrested by the police department. He was a great Nick, and we hope he gets some help soon. Mm. Things in uh, Nick land uh, with the whole Carmelo Anthony, Phil Jackson, Kevin Love conversation, the way the Knicks have played. This is uh, the latest iteration yeah. of bad Nickville. Yeah, I'm still feeling a little bit of Charles Oakley right now in my back. I tried to dunk on him when I was <laughs> down at the Atlanta Hawks, and uh, that didn't go so well. I walked off the floor, bent backwards and to the side. So hopefully they can get all that resolved. Charles Oakley which has made a nice contribution to our league. Bacon, nice drive. He gets the bucket and the bang. And out of a timeout, the 16 grows to potentially 19 real quickly. A little dribble exchange there led to a little isolation. Bacon loves to get to that right hand. You allow him to get to his right hand. He is tough. Once he gets ahead of steam and no one's picked him up at about the foul line area, it's buckets every time. Free throw shooting, and for a while, until Rattan Mays bought into being the point guard, they didn't have a real traditional point guard like they did with Dennis Smith but his defense has been outstanding as Smith goes to the hoop and lays it in you know I think for folks that are going to fill out their brackets mm -hmm. what a luxury Leonard Hamilton has when you can play like this increase a lead Isaac is on the bench mm -hmm. man is on the bench Ojo's on the bench and yet you're you're up by you know 17 19. Yeah. Well, he told us earlier that he thought the year that they were going to take off and make some noise would be this year, and they've certainly done that. Mays alley -oop. that's a point guard play right there to Kuma J. Still stoic over there. But I agree with you. Last year, that's a shot for Rattan Mays. No question about it. Henderson, three misses, fight for the rebound. Here we go again on a break. This team, I've picked them for the last four years to be my surprise team. And each year I've been disappointed. And I didn't do it this year. And uh, this has been the year for Florida State. The depth, the talent, the, oh, nice, the offensive weapons that they have this year and have bought into Coach Hamilton's defensive system. This is a very complete basketball team you at seven it's rare that he actually has to shoot over somebody being seven feet but he just shot one over a seven foot four player Ravi, that's the first time he looked at the basket when he caught the basketball at the free throw line it's amazing what happens when you look at the rim because he has the ability to shoot it all the way out the three but he's just been reluctant to do so tonight Drive and a foul from Angola Rodas. So we mentioned, you know, filling out your bracket. Where does FSU go? They're going to go high for some teams. Let's bring up the first blind resume, perhaps, 
of the season. You got a team 20 and 3, RPI of 10, strength of schedule 94. Joe Lenardi's got a two seed on the right side of the screen. Very impressive numbers as well, and currently a three seed. So it's Oregon on the left and Florida State on the right. Got the one on the right. I couldn't come up with the one on the left. Makes sense though. Really? Oregon. I would think that Florida State, given what, what we just showed there, mm -hmm. five and one, top 25, mm -hmm. real high RPI, higher RPI, would be the two seed, and Oregon would be the three seed. Yeah, and I and I a little bit of dyslexia there on my part because that's what I that's what I thought I thought I read because they to me they're definitely a two seed. Yeah, Florida State. Yes. Yeah. I mean those numbers would certainly suggest yeah, it. Yeah. But I've learned. In the 20 plus years, you don't go against Lenardi. He's, he's pretty solid. Yeah. But I mean, look at same number of wins, RPI much better, mm -hmm. strength of schedule way better. Oregon, you don't punish him because of the conference, but only two and one against the top 25. Yeah. And Florida State playing in the best league in the nation. I, I, I don't get it. Joe, a little, maybe a little rust for Joe. <laughs> maybe a little rust. Early. Still February. He's just trying to keep it interesting. Drama, change the channel. Maverick Rowan goes after it. He'll take another one and get that one to go. A little drama, change the channel. I think he's just trying to keep a little drama. <laughs> keep a little here. drama. Yeah. Big week for the game day crew with Reese, Seth, Jay. Double dip. There'll be a camera, and then they head out to Northern California for St. Mary's and Gonzaga. Mm. Man, it's going to be a great game. That That is the most athletic team I've seen Mark Few have in my eight years at ESPN. They are fun to watch. Ojo went down, picked it up, got fouled. Mentioned it, UNC Duke, Oregon, UCLA. Double header on rivalry week. Cameron Indoor and then Polly Pavilion, two of the great college basketball arenas. Both Sonic blockbusters is streamed live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Here at seven out of the game, he fouls out with just six points. For, peop for people who think that uh, UCLA is just going to run away with that one, Dylan Brooks has a penchant for making big shots and big games, and none bigger than the one that he hit down the stretch when they were up in Oregon. UCLA coming off of a couple of wins against the Washington schools, but boy, I, the most impressive win last week. There were a lot of them, but Oregon's over Arizona. Wow. Might have been the most impressive. A straight shellacking. With UCLA, you know, down the highway, you'd figure that might be a night, and again, it's Arizona, so you don't take it off, but you could certainly see looking ahead to UCLA. Mm -hmm. No such luck. <laughs> I mean, no one played well in that game. Destroyed I thought destroyed Arizona. Yeah, I thought Laurie Markinen would just go nuts because of the mismatch that he would have inside at seven feet tall. Nothing. Tribute to Ojo, who makes the free throws again tonight from a 40% shoot to an 80% shooter. Hard work does for you and discipline. A lot of kudos over there to Coach Jones, who's worked with him so diligently with his mechanics. No Joe producing. Woo! Henderson thought he was going to get it by him. The left hand blocked it. Down the other end, Isaac keeps it alive to man. Ojo, do it! Whoa. Oh, do it! <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't made one, attempted one yet. He thought about it. Oh, I thought he was going to pull the trigger. <laughs> yes. Take it next time, big fella. You deserve it. Not stoic. Big smile. Back to Florida State after this. Whoa. Andy breaking it down, rather. Andy is all over it, the podcast, <laughs> yes, the fireball is. thing, cinephile, they're everywhere. Can't stop it. Gonzaga still unbeaten Thursday, Lola Marymount, Saturday at St. Mary's. The longest game of the season, if you didn't see it last night, four overtimes. Hello. Cincinnati, the fighting Nick Cronin's third longest active streak in Division I. And if you didn't see this or hear about it, LaMelo Ball, who's Lonzo Ball's younger brother, scored 92 points in a high school game. Wow. That, that's, that, that's 92. They didn't they didn't extend the game. Wasn't four overtimes. That, that, that's that's incredible. <laughs> 92 <laughs> points. And he'll be bringing that act to Poly Pavilion to play for UCLA. Over 40 in the fourth quarter. Come on. The last person I can think of that did something like that, let's see, I think Cheryl Miller had 100 points in, in a yeah. game. 
Lisa Leslie, I think, 100 points in the game. Yep. And just Wilt, curious. You're going to go back to Wilt. Yeah. yeah. Just curious. Is that LaMelo across between Lafonso and Carmelo? Oh, all right. I'm just wondering. I like what you did there. Yeah. LaMelo, Lafonso, and Carmelo. I'm sure it is. That's exactly what it is. You think that? Yeah. Hmm. I'll have to check that. Xavier Raton May is named after you know who? Who? Xavier McDaniel. X Man. Yeah, the X Man. He was a bad dude. He was. Speaking of Charles Oakley, and you know, you always associate Oakley and, uh -huh. and a guy like Xavier McDaniel. Oh! Uh, yes. Uh, Xavier was more skilled. Yeah, he offensively. Was. He could score it. That was our own Xavier right there. Mm -hmm. Rattan Mays with the finish. How about Maverick? Top gun. You know what? Your 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 play by play takes my breath away, bro. Oh, so please stop. We we missed the, <laughs> we missed the whole Top Gun thing with Maverick during the eight threes. Bad job. You didn't like that one? Well, no, I we missed it. I didn't get in get into the Top Gun until late in that game. Yeah, and he's firing true. up eight threes. We yeah, should have that's true. Capitalized on yeah, that. Yeah, it's, my, my, it's our first year working together, bro. Nineteen game win streak at home. We're gonna get from Florida State. They did a terrific job guarding Dennis Smith, who's mm -hmm. only got eight points yes. tonight. Half of this, actually less than half, the average is 19 a game. And folks, that was the game plan coming in, is they wanted to really trap him at the top, get the basketball out of his hands, because they felt that North Carolina State didn't have enough other playmakers to be able to make plays out of it. Isaac, a lot of contact, no foul called. Man, kicks it to Bacon. I, I tell you what I did want to see. Hmm. I wanted to see Ojo take his first I three really wanted to season. see that one. That's what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. Set him up for a three before we get out of here. Thursday, it's the big time rivalry week, double dip. Talked about the Tobacco Road showdown with North Carolina and Duke. You know, Pinson getting better, and that's important for them. They, they miss his defensive presence, North Carolina. Oregon, UCLA, Sonic Blockbusters, they stream live on the ESPN app and, and watch ESPN. It's going to be important to see if Duke can control the backboard. Not many teams have been able to do that against Carolina, and if they can't keep Carolina off that glass, it's going to be a long day for the Blue Devils. Brandon Allen, number 40, has stepped in for Florida State. So does that give us an even 13 now tonight? Yes, it does. 13 different players used. Brandon Allen, a sharpshooter. Three for three in their last game against Clemson from the three-point line. Rowan gets uh, the ball to Abu, who gets fouled. I'll tell you what, I like the competitive spirit of this NC State team. They're, they're down, but they haven't given up. They continue to play hard, drive hard, playing hard on the defensive end. Mark Gottfried got those guys up at 6.15 in the morning, two practices in a row, trying to fire this team up. They were inspired in practice. I felt they came out and played hard. I just felt that they were overmatched. Early on, too. I mean, Isaac came out of the game and mm -hmm. scored seven quickies. Mm -hmm. And to your point, I mean, this is just a team with a lot better talent than the other team. Yeah. They also may be looking at a national champion team mm -hmm. here in Florida State. I mean, Abu with 14 tonight, Henderson 17, Maverick Rowan with 16. These guys have continued to compete. But without Dennis Smith's ability to get in the gaps and make plays, puts a lot of pressure on the other four guys out there on the floor. So credit Coach Leonard Hamilton and his. Ojo oh, with a terrific bounce pass. <laughs> Again, vision from the big fellows. He found a cutter. That was Brandon Allen's first two of the night. That's an unbelievable pass. Yes, indeed. Touch on, for the big man. On the hands. On the hands. We're not alone, though. The crowd, when Ojo had the ball out there at the three point range, he wanted to shoot it. Look at Michael Ojo, folks. And you got to get your hands up against him. How about a beautiful little bounce pass, squatting down low to make sure it stays low that you don't get a hand on it? Michael Ojo doing a little bit of everything tonight, except for taking that three. And he's playing with just such joy. I mean, mm -hmm. he's been smiling the whole time. That's this team, though, Raph. That they're all of that way. Very super ultra competitive but have a strong fondness and love for each other and really enjoy playing the game. Refreshing to see. Three assists for Ojo. That's a career high. <laughs> Bacon smiling, everybody smiling. Oh, Coming off a 109 point game, they're gonna get close again to 100. Ojo says, come, come meet this wall. Can you imagine running into that screen? Nope. 
Wouldn't get back up. Bacon, no. Ojo, yes. Big Michael Ojo. They had a practice yesterday, and uh, there was one guy who wasn't on the floor because he was in class, and that was Ojo. He's already graduated, but he was not at practice for the first half hour. He was in class. Nice move there by Lou. Well, partner, the defensive game plan of Leonard, Leonard Hamilton was to take the basketball out of the hands of sensational player Dennis Smith Jr. And they were able to do that all night long. And that was really the key to success, success here for Florida State. Another very impressive victory for FSU. They make it 19 straight at home. They win their 21st of the season, hold NC State to 10 fewer than they score on average. 95-71, our final score. My man, the Fonz, taking off the tie. Didn't work. We're going to be fully dressed next week. Back to the studio, Adnan Burke and Andy Katz. And a good smile from Leonard Hamilton.